Hi, it's Emmanuel Ezekiel from Baldwin Homes. I'm today with Brett Allegra Wood from yeah. Gladfish. <laughs> cool. And we just thought we'd uh, have a bit of a chat about um, some topical issues, which I'm sure lots of investors are worried about right now, which is coronavirus, um, COVID-19, the fun and games of uh, you now what was the beautiful start to a year, perfect start for the year, as Trump might say. Um, and it's, <laughs> obviously now it's uh, turning into a bit of a uh, fun and games and nobody knows what to think. So we thought we'd just... Straighten out from our, I guess, you know, well over 20 years experience in the property market. And not necessarily, I mean, it's interesting. I haven't been through one of these before. I've been through SARS, um, but SARS was a very Asian focused thing, um, not necessarily worldwide. I think this is worldwide. So, I mean, do you want to kick off? What do you think? Yeah, I th you know, I think history has shown us that every 5, 10, 15 years, you're going to get a worldwide issue that the whole world tends to panic about. And the stock market, especially over the last few days, has shown that, that when people don't understand what's going on, panic sets in and they start doing really stupid things. And there's like no rhyme or reason. Hunting for toilet paper. Yeah, you know, hunting for toilet paper. Why would the stock market drop 20% when the fundamentals that have got them to where they are still exist? Mm. So, and one of the reasons why I'm invested so heavily in property and have been for so many years is you don't have the same kind of fiasco of property dropping overnight, 10, 15, 20%. And that's because stocks and shares, they're disposable yeah. um, assets that can be actually yeah. bought and sold very, very quickly. Whereas yep. property, if you hold them for the long term it's and you're holding them for, for, liquid, for income, yeah. Yeah. they're not so liquid, so they don't tend to fluctuate in yeah. the same area. And when you have these kind of sentiments in the market, it creates... Uh, unbelievable opportunity if you know how to take advantage of bad news and most people tend to make more money in the downward market than they do in an upward market yeah and I, I don't think you know mentioning downward I don't think we're necessarily into a downward market um, and certainly for the UK um, you know we've had three we've had brexit you know we've had political uncertainty we've had brexit everything's been suppressed in the market and, and yes certain areas have done well and you know but the reality is is that i don't think this is necessarily the the downturn that everyone's talking about and yes from a, a share market um absolutely if you've got shares you've lost 10 20 percent who knows um in the last couple of weeks which is would have been devastating um if you're if you've pulled out you know if you pulled out at the bottom and and you know but I think the reality of the property market is it, it is a lot slower. Um, and so you can predict where things are going. And I think the fundamentals for me haven't changed. Um, you know, we've been very bullish on the property market, but not necessarily the whole property market, because I've been talking for a long time about not really a lot of towns and s places with small populations and very little investment, um, we haven't been touching. You know, so our focus in preparation, not for this, but for the inevitable recession when it comes um, has been to go after the best fundamentals and when you go after the best fundamentals you tend to ride these and yes you may have a drop but you'll find that it bounces back pretty quickly so i think really with the COVID is you've got to you've got to take out what is hype um, and what is fear mongering and what's real which, yeah and what's real and i think part of the hope and fear mongering is the news you know and, and the media i mean they are playing this for all it's worth and you know to some degree that's their job um, you know, in order to sell newspaper and sell column, column inches. Um, but that is not reflective upon the property market that underpins all that. Yeah, you know, newspapers sell bad news. Nobody wants to know there's going to be good weather tomorrow. They want to know whether it's raining, there's snow, there's hail, yeah. whether you can get to work or not. So bad yeah. news, unfortunately, sells more than actually good news. Yep. And, you know, as an investor, I want to take advantage of opportunities that present themselves. And when the market is like this, it's going to present many opportunities. One, in terms of the stock market, it will recover. We just don't know when, but if it's dropped 20% in the last few weeks, it's likely to recover. Uh, I was once told this comment, which has held fast for me for a long time. If there was once no problem, and now there is a problem, at some point there'll be no problem again. And that's how you take advantage of opportunity. So those are the fundamentals of investors. They look at patterns, they look at history, and then you can start to ride those patterns, predict those patterns, especially in property. And if you invest for the long term, it doesn't matter whether property goes up, whether it goes downwards, whether yeah. it goes sideways. If you invest for income, that will always be there. And there's ways to actually protect yourself and make sure you have a long term investment, regardless of what happens to the market over a short or medium term. And I think what we're not saying is we're not saying that COVID doesn't exist and it's not a, you know, an existential crisis and all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, it is to a certain degree. I think 
statistically, you're more likely to die of the flu than you are to die of actually COVID. So there's an element of that, which is why we say the fear mongering is not necessarily warranted as it is. Um, but the other side of it is, is the way you should combat that, which is what most health professionals are saying now is, you know, wash your hands more often, don't cough or don't go out if you're sick and, you know, things like this, which actually, you know, that side of it. But the problem is, you know, we always look to the future and think what's the worst case scenario and the media helps us um, clarify that thinking. But that has nothing to do with real property. All, uh, except for the fact that you know, if people don't go out and people don't go on viewings and things like that, yes, we may see a drop in prices. So we're not even saying that prices won't drop and things won't happen as a result of this. But what we're saying is the long-term fundamentals won't change too much. Now, sure, if everyone gets unemployed and you know, 5, 10, 15% of people start you know, passing away from this, okay, fair enough, then you know, there's another case to be had for that. But that doesn't appear to be what's happening right now. Yeah, I like to go back in, in history and look at similar kind of viruses, epidemics. And if you look at history of how many people have actually died from previous viruses like this, you'll actually see that this particular virus is <coughs> minuscule compared to many other viruses and many other deaths in terms of millions of deaths. I mean, literally millions of deaths that happened previously. Mm. And we're all here, we still survived, we're still doing really well. So I think uh, it's an inter interesting perspective. Is I, I live in Singapore. And, uh, and so, you know, and I travel around quite a bit, whether it be to Australia or the UK, so I spend a bit of time out, you know, quite a bit of time out. Hang on a minute, am I allowed to sit next to you, just come back from Singapore? <laughs> <coughs> yeah. No, joking, joking. You can't catch it through video. Um, no, exactly. But I think the, the interesting thing is, is the way Singapore handled it, and, and Singapore was one of the first places to get it outside China um, because of our, you know, deep links with China. And, um, you know, the interesting thing is they've now got that relatively under control. It's not totally under control, it's not totally gone. It's still there, there's new cases, but the amount of cases has dropped off considerably. So, yeah. um, you know, so, you know it's, it's under control and the way they've gone about that has been pretty good. And, and it's an interesting thing because what they did is they really focused the media on educating people and not creating fear mongering. And so most people knew if you go out, wash your hands more frequently, you know, and these sort of things. And, and actually it's a, it's a really good test case for what hopefully happens in other places. Um, you know, and, and certainly with the UK, you know, we've got to, if you're healthy, you're unlikely to die from it, so don't worry about it. If you're unhealthy and you've got something, you know, an, you know accompanying illness or, you know, um, you know, weakness, then don't go out as much or, you know, limit the amount you're going out to wide group places and things like that. And, you know, if, if you do that, we can get this under control and then we can get on with having a really good year. Um, you know, in, in property, which is what everyone was expecting and, and certainly, you know, we're all hoping for. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the basic fundamentals is about cleanliness, about hygiene, and taking precautions when you're not well. I mean, this is the first time where people who might not be well are actually taking the time not to go out and think about other people. Really, whenever you're not well, that should be a consideration. But I think it's just bringing yeah. it to the forefront of how we need to act as society and how we need to be responsibly. Yep, yep. And I think bringing it back to property, and what you should be doing now with regards to property is, I think one of the challenges is, and, and actually nothing really changes, which means if you're gonna buy something, if you're gonna get involved in property, buy something with the best fundamentals, buy something with you know cash flow and know what that cash flow is before you get involved in it, what the likely capital growth is, what the investment in the area is, the shops, schools, transport links, major employees, major investment, all the fundamentals, all that sort of stuff. That doesn't change. And if you buy in those areas, even if we do have a drop, it's likely to rebound quickly and then you'll see growth. So it's not the way, you know, again, we're not saying it's not going to grow, but if you're buying or if you're getting involved now, make sure you do your diligence. All the stuff that we talk about anyway, I mean, it's yeah. stuff you should be doing. Don't yeah. be listening to the BS and hype, you know, that salesmen pe people spurt. Yeah, listen, if you're a, an investor already in property and you've got people renting your property, coronavirus, they're still going to be renting your property. In fact, if they've got to stay at home, they're going to be staying there a little bit longer. Yeah. So if you have More a long-term investment, <laughs> people aren't going to move out of your property yeah. that they're renting. They're going to continue to want to be there. We live in an island where we're producing 300,000 homes per year, yeah. less than what we require. So there's always going to be a demand. So the supply out is actually not sufficient for the actual demand. So if you have a property you're investing and you're investing in the right areas, doesn't matter what happens over the short or medium term, you will still have that cash flow yeah. coming in every single month, every single week, every single year, ongoing. And there's ways to make sure that you buy the right property in the right area with the right yield, the right return, 
to protect yourself over the long term. Yeah, and I think the, the other side is the government, um, you know, as much as they attack landlords and things like that, and we, that's a separate to topic, <laughs> um, actually they are putting things in place that certainly appears on the face of it right now to be committed to getting those houses built and actually getting more houses built, which is great for our market, you know. Um, so actually, that's a really positive thing. I mean, we've seen the, the, you know, we were talking the other day about development finance, how it's starting to free up a bit more. You know, they, they've already come out and said that what they'll consider doing is freeing up the restrictions put on banks to, for lending and things like that. And so when they sort of, you know, they start to act on the market, actually, if there was a drop like this, it may well curb that out, which is quite good. Yeah, the, the market's changed dramatically over the last few months. Before Brexit, that was a huge concern. Nobody knew what was actually happening. Now that we actually have a plan to come out of that, everything started to look more positive. So that's probably the biggest thing that we've had in the UK, yeah. even more so than coronavirus. Obviously, you know, Brexit's been yeah. going on for a number of years, lots of uncertainty right across the board, the stock market, the housing market, the employment market, people from overseas. And we're, as a country, we're very resilient. We've worked through that and we will certainly work through this short term blip in, in our economy and, and, yeah. and the pandemonium. Yep. I mean, and one of the other things too is what we're finding now is that we're actually the UK is re-exerting itself as a world city and a world market um, because what's happening is a lot of those people from Asia are now reinvesting and we're seeing a lot of our international buyers are coming back to the fold and saying, hey, I want to get back involved and they feel like it's a time to get back in now. There's some political certainty and some Brexit and that sort of thing, which is great news for yeah, us. The, the, the UK economy and the major cities are amazing places to invest. If you have the right fundamentals, good, good to go over that again, buying the right property in the right location with the right yield, fixing your interest rates for three, five, seven or ten years, you're going to have ongoing income during that period. And the market sometimes goes up, sometimes goes down, sometimes it goes flat. We just don't know when that's going to happen. But if you're no. investing for the long term for cash flow, property predominantly is about cash flow if you're a long term investor. Yeah. If you do that with the basic fundamentals, it doesn't really matter what happens to the marketplace, no. you're going to be protected. And you know, people that are renting property haven't left their properties during coronavirus. They've stayed there yeah. and will continue to stay there. And I, and I think the other thing is too, um, is if you own property over the long period of time, you know, and you're holding property, you are going to at some point experience that drop. You are going to have to live for it. So you need to get ready for it and make sure you're used to it. If you think that you're going to get in right before it happens and get out, you know, sorry, get out right before it happens and get back in right after it, you know, it's a fool's game trying to think that. There's no one that predicts that. And you may get it right once, but I guarantee you can't repeat it over and over and over again with any accuracy. So you're far better to build your portfolio so you can hold it all the way through. Yeah, I, I have this um, way of explaining property that it's not a get rich quick scheme, it's a get rich slowly scheme. Property will appreciate over time, we just don't know when. Historically it's been between 8 and 10 years, it could be 15 years, it could be 20 years. It will appreciate over time, but if you invest for cash flow, that will always come. We just don't know when that equity raise is actually going to happen. You know, in, in London it happened very fast, now it's actually going into the other regional areas like Northampton, Birmingham, Leicester, Manchester, Liverpool. All of those areas are growing faster than London and the reason for that, you have the ripple effect, is that those areas, the, the loan to income ratio is much lower than it is in London and that's why they're starting to accelerate and, and increase their actual um, yeah. growth and it will but, continue to do so. But the interesting thing is we've seen, you know, since 2016, London has slowed right down both from capital and yield perspectives from both yields. But now we're starting to see the capital values are starting to come back. Yeah? Correct. The rents are still, I mean, we're, we're pushing our rents up all the time. You know, we, we run about 1,300 properties, um, manage about 1,300 properties, and, and we're consistently pushing up our rents because obviously with regulations and all those sort of things, but that helps the, your investor, and investor as, you know, as investors, their yield increase. You know, we need to do that because obviously we've had taken some hits from taxes and from, you know, regulation and things like that. But, you know, a lot of this sort of stuff is not nothing to do with coronavirus. But I think with the coronavirus, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater is what we're saying. You know, stay focused on what you, you know, the fundamentals are and, and you know, keep investing, keep your head about you. You know, if you're in a position where you're in a vulnerable position, then maybe you need to, you know, grab a, a meeting with, you know, a portfolio manager or, you know, whoever your mentor is and just ask them whether, you know, how to secure your, your portfolio. But for the most part, um, 
you know, I won't say sit back and enjoy it because, yeah, well, make, make sure, sit back, wash your hands and, uh, and, you know, we'll see it through. There's one thing I would like to add is that where more property comes on the market, when it's a new build, you'll be amazed how many people want to move into a new build. So if you're buying a new investment property, you're going to have the most amount of people attracted to those properties because they're brand new, there's nothing for them to do compared to a second or third hand property, something that's 20 or 30 or 40 years old, compared to something that's brand new, you're going to get a premium for that property and you're going to get it rented much faster. So now's a great time to be buying a property, especially uh, if there's uncertainty in the market. And there is uncertainty right across the board, including um, developers actually selling their property. So yeah. there may be opportunities to take advantage of this small blip in the current marketplace. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and look, you know, we'll keep uh, certainly abreast of changes. So if that, you know, if that changes and the fundamentals change, which I'm not sure they will. Coronavirus can get worse, but I think, and you know, all credit to the NHS and all credit to the system they got here, they certainly seem to be quite prepared for this. Now, I mean, you know, the, the thing with the whole, you know, Wuhan was that they got totally eclipsed. Their health services got totally um, overrun. Overrun. Uh, and so it took them a long time to get it under control. But actually, and I think that's what's happened with Italy too, but hopefully, and I think we are seeing that now, that the UK is actually putting stuff in place earlier than leaving it too late. And I think most countries now are starting to do that. You know, And it will work, yeah. So, good. So I hope you guys have, have learnt something valuable today. If you want to contact Brett, you've got Brett, Ran Brett Rance, also at Gladfish. Yep. You've got Emmanuel Ezekiel about raising your financial IQ. If you like any of the information, please like, share, uh, and subscribe. Uh, if there's any further comments that you'd like to ask about Brett or yeah. myself, we're happy to yeah. answer any questions that you have going forward. Absolutely. Yeah.